It's been widely reported that housing prices in New Jersey are some of the highest in the country. You add to that a high property tax, and many people think twice about coming here or staying here. Ellen Kaloje begins our coverage on the New Jersey real estate market. Thank you, Larry. Surveys show that more people move out of New Jersey than any other state in this country, mainly because of high taxes and expensive houses. And that's why millennials, you know, people under 30, have such a hard time buying their first home because they just can't afford it. It's really hard. Um, you know, my parents raised me well to always work hard and save my money. And it's tough when you feel like that's not enough in this day and age. Not enough for 24-year-old Amanda Santora to buy a house of her own just yet. She has a good job and would like to get married in the next few years, but she's having a hard time moving out of her parents' house. Um, student loans, car payments, any other type of payment that you have, and really, really high house prices, it makes it really impossible. And it doesn't seem like there's really any other solution because rent is sky high as well, so you either throw your money away on rent, or you just try and save as much as you can for a house. She's certainly not alone among her generation or even older New Jerseyans who've been renting for years. The Garden State consistently ranks in the top 10 areas with the highest cost of living. And even with a decent salary, buying a house can seem like a distant dream. Take a look at this. According to Zillow, houses have gone up 4% just in the past year. The median house in New Jersey costs $312,412. Amanda wants to stay close to her family in Morris County, where the median house there costs $425,000. And even rent in New Jersey is sky high. According to myapartmentmap.com, you'll pay on average $1,400 a month for a studio apartment. That's $353 above the national average. So that makes saving for a down payment on a house quite a challenge. You think you have a decent amount set aside for a down payment on a house, and then once you start factoring in closing costs, taxes, and things like that, then you realize it's still not manageable. Her mom, Debbie, says she and her husband, Rich, have tried to show all their daughters that you can't live beyond your means and that you need to make smart decisions that might eventually help you get that house you want. Saving and being smart with money and you know, if you have everything paid this month, then you use the rest of the money to try to do something else. But it's it's going to be very hard for them. It really is. And it's sad. I feel feel bad for the kids today. So nobody really expects taxes to go down in Jersey anytime soon or for housing prices to plummet. And that's why people like Amanda Santora may have to leave their beloved New Jersey because they may not be able to afford that starter home anytime soon. Reporting for Jersey Matters in East Hanover, Morris County, I'm Ellen Kaloje. There is a major shift in home ownership right now going on in New Jersey that has gotten the attention of economists, of real estate experts, and politicians. Here to talk about it is Kevin Reardon, executive director for the Rutgers Center for Real Estate. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. So, so what is the major shift? What are we talking about? Uh, pleasure, first of all, being here today, Larry. Uh, the shift is actually that there's just a lot less people who are able to buy homes or want to buy homes. And that's a function of a couple of things. The first thing is basically what is the cost of the homes? In the state of New Jersey, there's a problem with respect to the amount of land that is available to buy. And second, the approvability process to make that land available to build houses on. Both those factors contribute to an increased cost of land. So to start off, the housing price is higher. Now, holding that to a side for a second, now you look at who is the demographic that wants to buy homes. And generally speaking, that has been the younger crowd, the younger cohort, say 25 to 35. <clears throat> and those people today are unable to buy homes. First of all, as the price of the house has moved up, the down payment requirement to buy those homes has increased. And therefore, they're sort of running upstream, if you will, trying to save more as they're trying to become eligible to buy the home. Coupled with that is the banks have put in more stringent underwriting requirements to look at eligibility requirements who would be able to get a mortgage to actually buy the homes. So becoming more difficult through the approval process at the bank, coupled with the uh, desire or the ability to get more down payment and in, their, in a rental situation, 
rents have been increasing at a very good rate in the state of New Jersey. So there's a lot of economic factors, some of which is out of their control, uh, most of which I would say is out of their control, uh, but to make them able to buy a house. It's fascinating because I want to, I want to pick up on the last thing you said. It's fascinating because some of the restrictions on buying a house were loosened because there was a feeling in the country that a lot of people were not able to attain the American dream, and part of the American dream is home ownership. Now, because of the financial crisis, they turn around and tighten those rules so you have more and more people who can't attain that American dream. Is that happening across the country, or is it just New Jersey? Now, nationally, we were at a 62.5% ownership rate. So we've actually dipped below where that national average was before. Now, let's talk about the concern of that. Because I would imagine that affects housing starts, it, how, it affects the economy, it affects home sale prices, it affects everything. It will affect everything eventually, am I right? That's right, that's right. So it's affecting, obviously affects the housing prices. On the positive side, if you're in the rental market and you own rental homes or multifamily properties, you've been doing quite well. And the construction money that's available today for new development is more earmarked towards multifamily housing. Is this something that we need to fix? Is this something the state and the federal government has to look at and say, hey, we got a problem here? Well, I think the government always had its ability to put people in the homes by allowing the interest rate deductions and allowing the flow through of taxes to be also as an itemized deduction on the tax return. So that, in effect, was a subsidy for someone to buy homes. Now, today, we've changed that. We've eliminated the SALT deduction and there's going to be some caps on mortgage interest rates. I'm not sure long term if that's really the best thing to improve people's ability to get into homes. Well, except it doesn't have the same effect across the country as it would in New Jersey. So this is specifically in New Jersey and, and if we want to say California and New York where there, there are higher property costs right. and, and those deductions mean a lot. So what effect will it have in New Jersey? And so let's eliminate the federal government for a second because they've already made up their mind. Does the state have to do something? I think the state can possibly do something. I mean, Governor Murphy today proposed treating a tax deduction or tax payments as charitable contributions on a tax return. I heard that as I was driving down to the show this morning. Not sure how that's all going to work out in terms of the tax returns themselves. The other thing that, that's really important around here is that this still is a vibrant area for people to have jobs in. Uh, we are still in the New York City area, which is the mecca of finance for the world. So there's still a tremendous desirability to live in this area because of the jobs. And from a uh, quality of life, we still have the Jersey Shore. Yeah, let me talk about you know, just a couple of the things quickly. Since we talked about the SALT deductions, is that going to force people out of the state? There's been a concern, especially for people that own mansions, especially the people that have high uh, mortgages that it might force them across the border? I think people who own mansions own mansions, and I think they may be slightly indifferent to the elimination of the salt. I think the issue might become more acute for people who are on limited income and uh, on a fixed income, and given where interest rates have been for the last 10 years almost, that's a low return profile. So with a low return profile, and an increasing cost basis through not only property taxes, but other costs of living in the state of New Jersey, that could push people to move to other areas which have more favorable cost of living. Well, let me double down on the question. You have the elimination of the SALT deduction, and then you also have a millionaire's tax. Does that force millionaires to sell their homes? Uh, again, if a millionaire is here, I think a millionaire is probably able to withstand whatever he needs to do. I think it's those people on the cusp that would be more affected. One last question. We talk about foreclosures in the state. It, again, New Jersey, after slipping down to number two, is now number one. It seems like there's an increase in foreclosures. Why? After the crisis, there was a tremendous amount of uh, defaults. First of all, a mortgage starts in default. It doesn't necessarily have a default and go to foreclosure. So you start in a default, and then you look at the situation, why is there a default? Perhaps you want that person to be able to work things out. So there's a, there's a time period where the banks will start to try to make things work or they just can't push the whole default process or the foreclosure process through. I think today, banks' balance sheets have gotten a lot more healthier and they're at the point now where they want to just say, okay, let's move it through the foreclosure process. Let's clean this up. We're giving you enough time. Now we have to take action. And so, so two things. So this is all based still on the housing crisis that many years later. 
And because now they're taking action, does that mean things are going to get better? There'll be less foreclosures? I would say yes. I would say yes. And, I, and unfortunately, I would say there'll be less foreclosures because we have less even home ownership going on, as we've been talking about, because there's more renters. So Thank you, sir. Larry, I appreciate you coming pleasure. in. Kevin Reardon, Executive Director of the Rutgers Center for Real Estate.